Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Let me start off with Tig, because you're, you're, you guys, you're actually making news over the weekend. Yeah, I tend to I tend to do that every now and then. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> do you want to give us the rundown on what the Patriot Rally was and what led up to that? Like, why why that rally was even going down? Well, I mean, it, it, it kind of stems back from uh, July. I think it was like July nineteenth. They had a back the blue back the blue rally. Mm-hmm. Um, it was sixth annual back the blue, and uh, they kind of it got they didn't get as it, the there was much people to show up as they did the previous years, because uh, they got word that, you know, Antifa, BLM, mm-hmm. and the Communist Party is supposed to come in and kind of counter-protest it. So, you know, people were kind of like, well, I'm not going to go out there. I'm not going to take my kids. I'm not going to do this. Uh, people ended up, they didn't really cancel the whole thing. So, you know, Michelle was out there. You know, Randy Corpin was out there and stuff. And I, unfortunately, I wasn't there. I was doing a shooting competition. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 the protesters, they came in and, and just started attacking people. You know, people got hit, hit, hit in the head with skateboards. They were hitting uh, 60, 70-year-old, you know, men and women and just attacking everybody. Mm-hmm. Police were told to stand down. Uh, the only reason why they got out of there was because of one uh, uh, SWAT lieutenant said, no, I'm not leaving these guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down there and get them out. So that's the only reason why everybody was able to get out of there. They had about 20 bikes, I guess, down in the, in the circle that they had to escort out. They were kicking them, hitting them. Um, one guy actually got hit so bad he dropped his bike and his bike had to get pushed out by somebody else. Okay. Um, but so, you know, and then just other things was kind of going on, you know, people wanted to do, you know, a little bit more rallies, but you know, they were trying to, you know, the left was trying to intimidate them and shut them down and it was working. Mm-hmm. I did this one cause I'm tired of, you know, I'm, I'm tired of them trying to silence us when they sit there and say that they're, they're the ones oppressed. They're the ones being silenced. Mm-hmm. Well, actually you're silencing everybody else is what you're trying to do. Um, so I did it. And within about 20, with less than 24 hours, the Democrat or the Democrat, or the same thing. Uh, the Denver communist party, uh, did a counter protest is what they're to, uh, to the muster. Mm-hmm. Uh, they called it soup drive. And so they're collecting cans of soup and, uh, you know, doing that for the homeless, they say, but, you know, in my mind, being a military guy, yeah, okay, that's what you're going to do, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it just <clears> happened <throat> to conveniently fall at the same time that your your rally was going down. Oh, it was, they even mentioned it, it's a counter, pro, it's a counter protest to our muster. Okay. They straight up posts and everything saying we're going to, again, they wanted to shut us down. They wanted to silence us. They wanted to be louder than us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and And then we, obviously, we got people on their feet just like they do on our feeds. Mm-hmm. They, Saying that you know the BLM feeds, the Antifa feeds, and the communist feed that they're going to come in and immediately just do what they did at the back the blue rally. Well, we all know what they did at the back the blue rally. They literally attacked people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Denver PD got involved. They're like, well, we're not going to allow this to happen the same way it did the first time. So they end up putting barriers up in between us. I mean, there there was a pretty good distance, a good, mm-hmm. I would say, close to you know, seventy five yards mm-hmm. um, that they had in between us. Um, you know, when we first got there, we ended up showing up a little bit early, um, probably about a good, uh, I don't know, 30 of us, uh, showed up with my, well, I started an organization called United American Defense Force. So I had them out there with us, you know, they had the riot gear stuff on pretty much not battle rattle because they weren't carrying long guns, nothing like that, but just like riot gear, protective stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got there again about one o'clock. We had an agitator that, that showed up and he was wearing, I call him the black guns matter guy. Cause that's the shirt he was wearing. Right. And so he was there. I mean, just trying to get in my face, you know, obviously he walks up, you're nothing but a you know, racist white supremacist. You're, a, you, you know, all kinds of whatever, you know, everything that they always say normally you mm-hmm. know, dialogue, even if you try to engage with them, it's, it's, it's worthless. Okay. So uh, that guy that we all saw in the video of this, uh, that, that was coming out here that had the, uh, black guns matter shirt on was trying to, uh, get you started. Yeah. He was trying to get anybody and everybody he could, he could get, um, any, yeah. anybody caller that came in, uh, to, to support the Patriot mustard, they just calling him a house, a house brother. Mm-hmm. You know, they just, okay. Uh, so, and, mm-hmm. 
Uh, I mean, I mean you, do you you know Maj, right? You know that uh, Black Guns Matter has to do with Maj Ture. I'm, I think you guys know each other, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. I saw his post. He, he, he didn't really claim him after, after the incident happened, but, you know, I forgot exactly what he said. You know, he's like, well, if he shot him, then the guy deserved it. I don't think, you know, he really knew the whole situation either. Mm -hmm. um, but... I think Maj just put a lot of stuff out there on this. Uh, I did try to reach out to him. I think he's really busy right now. But uh, Black Guns Matter is not like Maj is not says he doesn't have anything to do with that guy. And no, that, that guy is an agitator. That's like oh. Maj, for example, was showing some other footage of that guy at other events doing the same thing. Where right. last right. February, I read about him. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, his name was uh, Jacob Kelly. Um, he's really well known in the Antifa circles and the BLM circles. So I've, I've done a lot of research into him. Okay. So, yeah. He's nothing to do with Black Guns Matter. He's more uh, Antifa type of guy. Right. Yeah. You you I mean, you you understand that, right? Right, Tig? Oh yeah, no, I, I mm -hmm. knew I knew him. Mm -hmm. uh, but that I did you know without a, you know without knowing who he was. That's the only thing I could go off of. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> plus, I was trying to give Maj a lot of advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can't control who buys our shirts and stuff like that, but we can definitely tell who we're dealing with with the attitudes, right? And I'm not sure if it's some kind of ploy by people out there, like a deliberate ploy to have these things and try to get them on the news and involved in something to make people who are out there trying to do positive things look bad. Yeah, because well, when he initially walked up, he had a he had a hoodie on, so he would so the the black guns matter shirt was uh was covered. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we we came in, we we actually allowed nine news. You know, obviously they came in, they came in with the with the murder, um, with the mm -hmm. shooter, mm -hmm. yeah. did the rally thing. But of course, you know, we asked him like, "Who's this guy with you?" He's like, "Oh, he's he's security." Mm -hmm. So, um. <clears throat> You know, the, the other guy, obviously, we didn't let him in. There was another uh, wannabe reporter guy we didn't let in that always follows the Antifa and the, pretty much the rioters and looters and tries and tries to antagonize people as well. We didn't let him in. Okay. Um, but, you know, for the most part, the rally went good. You know, the, the Communist Party, they're over there obviously shouting all their hate stuff. You know, we had some Proud Boys that showed up, in you know, into the muster. And, you know, mm -hmm. the guys are out there, man, they're just comical. It's, it's it was just funny. I mean, there's nothing really derogatory at them to uh, the the uh, Communist Party. You know, they're all sitting there saying they hate you. You know, we want to you know kill you. We want to silence you stuff. And they're just out there saying we love you. You know, it was it was funny. It was just back and forth chant like that. But mm -hmm. anyway, herself, you know, turn out about, about 200 people. I'd say showed up, maybe a little bit over 200, mm -hmm. which. It should have been a lot more, but I was getting messages from people. You know, I would like to bring my kids. I would like to come down, but I'm just, I'm just afraid something's going to happen. Cause I'm afraid they're going to, they're going to attack. Mm -hmm. Again, did not be it. You shouldn't have to fear that. But anyways, so as we're getting ready to wrap it up, cause I wasn't going to be there all day. I was just trying to make, you know, just a point and just leave, let the cops, you know, that way, not, you know, you know, not make the cops stand outside all day, but I knew they're going to have to deal with them that, that night too. So, I cut it, cut it short. It's only about an hour and a half we were there, but just prior to his uh, exiting, the the nine, nine news producer, the shooter, and the agitator uh, were all grouped together talking. Okay. Um, then as we started exiting, they kind of broke up, you know, and then they then the agitator immediately came over. Obviously, you know, the ca all the cameras are following this guy now, and you know he's just immediately just starts going at people trying to agitate him. He's literally walking up to. Uh, um, Joe Altman, his dad, his dad's black, he's white. Of course, they always say Joe, he's racist too, but walks right up to his dad. His dad's an older veteran. Um, I think he's in, a, he's, he's about in his 60s or something and walks up to him. He could, could, this kid's like in his 20s. Mm -hmm. and first thing out of his mouth is, I'm a beat. Mm -hmm. Tell him who the guy is. And, you know, his, the, I, I don't remember Joe's dad's name, but he just kind of looks at him, and just smiles and laughs. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll, okay, whatever. And just, and so he, Turns his attention to another another gentleman. You know, he walks off. He went after about four people, uh, <clears throat> tried to get in, just trying to agitate. And one, he went after one of the females that was there again, got in her face. And this is when I was actually coming out. I was getting ready to go over there, and she just turned and walked away. So I kind of walked away. 
And then I don't know, there, I think my live feed's still up there, but you can see it, when I started live feeding, I was filming the altercation between uh, the agitator and a, one of the Proud Boys. You know, they're pretty much nose nose to nose, really. You know, and he was just bowing up to. Him. Mm-hmm. You know, I walked there for a fight. <clears throat> I was, you know, I was there just for a muster, mm-hmm. and I walked up. You know, kind of you know, tapped him, say, "Hey, man, let's go." It's just not even worth it. We turned, walked. You know, then next to you know, my whole organization. We all kind of left together with a lot of the people that are inside the rally. You know, there was a crowd that was out there, you know, obviously cheering us on, you know, saying you know, that was awesome, whatever. So we just kind of kept going. That was, you can see, again, you can see it on the live feed. I was videoing it. And I was kind of seeing what the cops would do out during the altercation between uh, the Proud Boy and the Agitator. But they were they were just kind of just standing back, just kind of letting it escalate. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, I was kind of surprised by that i figured they would have kind of came in or got a little bit closer but they didn't move Mm -hmm. Uh, so we left we're probably i don't know almost a block away when we heard the gunshot Mm -hmm. um but it was you know again some of the some of the groups like stayed stayed back casper he's running for congress he stayed back because he showed up he was actually one of the one of the guys that he went uh, up and got in the face and called him a house brother and stuff Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're staying back and the group that Tex was with, he was put part of another, a whole other uh, organization. I think it was like the Reapers or something like that. Don't really remember, but um, they got an altercation. I don't know, don't know what started it yet. Don't know how they started engaging, but I'm pretty sure he probably just walked up to him and just started going off like he did with everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, you know, Tex, for some reason, the shooter uh, somehow. And the group that Tex. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We're getting a little bit of feedback from you. Yeah. Turns turns towards the individual, walks over, and with about six to nine seconds, you hear the gunshot, you know. Mm-hmm. And I actually just saw some pretty good uh, little layout of some still pictures just before you, about five minutes before you called. Mm-hmm. And a little bit before that. Mm-hmm. But definitely tell that, um, well, I, I can from my point of view, it looked like Tex kind of walked over, stopped, and that kid kind of approached him. Uh, Tex, you know, kind of put up his pepper spray, didn't spray him. Um, the kid reached out, looked like it was because his arm was already down, and these are all still shot. Mm-hmm. One, one, one day we'll see the uh, the actual probably video footage. But yeah, I think the but, I think the the uh, the cops there had lots of uh, or at least a couple of cameras rolling. So yeah, they've well, seen the, footage we haven't seen. We're getting stuff from people yeah. doing live things and maybe photographers that are on the scene, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so what my point of view when just seeing the still pictures, mm-hmm. um, Tex had his arm up. It looks like he brought his arm down as that kid was coming in to either shove him or grab the mace. Tex slapped him, and at the same time he's slapping him, you can see him. He totally steps back. And that kid immediately goes to uh, goes to draw his pistol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he gets a little from his holster. That's when Tex came up and and sprayed him. It's the, by the time he was spraying, he was already you know presenting the presenting the pistol and, mm-hmm. and one shot. Mm-hmm. Um, so and you know everybody knows now that uh, he was supposed to be a security guard for Nine News. Mm-hmm. He has no he has no CCW license. So. He was, you know, everything that he was doing was illegal. And if you are down there, you have to identify yourself as security mm-hmm. and didn't have any of that. You know, he was, he was known, a known leftist. I mean, he was a Bernie supporter. I mean, you guys, you guys know, but he was a mm-hmm. Bernie supporter. He was a open wall, he was, uh, Occupy Wall Street during that time. So he was a totally left, left leaning individual. And the fact that Nine News hires this guy, obviously mm-hmm. he didn't. Pinkerton, I think, is saying he, they, he never worked for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Nine News hires this guy, brings him to a you know a pro must a patriot muster. But again, it wasn't a pro uh, police. It wasn't a pro Trump. It was just a patriot muster. Patriots come out, stop being afraid, and that's all it was. Come on out, it's it, you'll be fine. And, and from pretty much we were fine, except for when Nine News brings a freaking shooter to the mm-hmm. to an event. Were you Otherwise, guys, did you, so did you all, I'm not talking about whether or not you were concealed carrying, but did you guys go there uh, outwardly armed, like rifles, uh, slung, or anything like that? Nope. Uh, Denver, you're not allowed to open carry. You have to conceal carry in Denver. Okay. All right. But, but yeah, I go everywhere I go, I'm armed, uh, just because, you know, I get, I get the nice, I, I get the love letters from everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, 
I just want to make sure I get love back if I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, <laughs> so, but yeah, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there are guys that in the organization, obviously, they carry. There's some that don't carry. You know, we have, you know, people that just they just don't want to carry, but they'll carry, you know, obviously something to uh, protect themselves, with, but not a pistol. Yeah. Okay. So I think John has some info here that he can give us um, on this guy that's the shooter. Because there's a lot of stuff out there. Like, it was this guy a Pinkerton? You know, um, clearly he wasn't licensed Denver already. Uh, you know, they already looked into that, right? So that's why this guy's locked up. He wasn't licensed or registered, like John said, uh, or like Tig said. So what do you, what can you tell us about him, John? You're muted, I think. Sorry, right. you're yeah. absolutely right. Uh, he was an then left this an Occupy uh, Wall Street guy, and he did have connections with um, a lot of the left-leaning groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nine News con- contracted with Pinkerton. Uh, Pinkerton subcontracted out to another vendor. I haven't been able to get the name of the other vendors that they subcontracted out to, mm-hmm. and he was an employee of that other vendor. So he was a subcontractor to Pinkerton, um, and he wasn't supposed to be armed at all there. Uh, So he took it upon himself to, you know, violate his contract with Pinkerton and carry armed because he wasn't licensed as an armed security guard Mm -hmm. um, or have any type of security license whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So so that's what happened there with him. So obviously, I mean, Kevin, if you if you have anything, or or John, even if you have anything, you know, feel free to, to jump in there. But uh, Tig, you know, I reached out to you because in, in the beginning, when I was hearing about this out in New Mexico, uh, at the event that Kevin and I were doing, um, I, w- I was aware it was happening in Denver, but you know, I I didn't realize it had anything to do with you. And then at some point, I started seeing like, oh, this, you know, Tig Tigan involved in that so what's your like what's your take on this whole thing man being that you put on this event you had a you know as you told us you had a reason why you did it like after this now what's your take on everything that went down it was pretty much it everything that happened i figured was going to happen except for i didn't really think someone was going to get blasted in the face um i, mm-hmm. I knew they're over they're going to try to they're going to get they're going to try to get the get in a fight um they're gonna be agitating the whole entire time and i figured there would have been a little bit of a a fight uh along the way either coming in or going out um so i mean it wasn't really surprising that they were out there doing that but again we didn't go after them they came after us just like i said they would Mm -hmm. just like i told everybody they're gonna come in because that's what they do they sit there and say that we're the aggressors we're the attackers we're the oppressors no they are everything that they say we are Mm -hmm. everything um, reminds me of I, the brown shirts. Yeah, what's that? It reminds me of the brown shirts. Exactly. I mean, we. I think we as just as patriots, just Americans in general, we need to start shutting these people down. We need to start coming together and standing on the streets and telling them, "No, we're done. We're tired of you destroying our city." Protest, protest. Not mm-hmm. a big deal. Mm-hmm. Start when get like what they did at Back the Blue and what they do at the, uh, some of these other places. You know, even even when you're doing, uh, you know, the uh, what do they call it, the, the, the Trump rolling march thing with the vehicles, they said and they want to attack your vehicle because you have a different ideology than them. We don't go out there and attack them, but it's come to a point where we might have to start doing that. Mm-hmm. Bolden, I mean, you literally have a communist party saying they're going to attack Americans on American soil because mm-hmm. it's it's sad. And, and people and the sad thing is. The other sad thing is people are scared. They're legitimately scared to come out and do anything. Mm-hmm. And so so the I think um, I'm trying to understand what's your most important thing that you were trying to get out of this. You're trying to get, instead of people staying home and being intimidated by folks who are saying, don't come out here, you know, don't have anything to say. And then when, and when you do, they're, they're deliberately trying to get you guys into a situation, right? Because I think you said you saw these three people involved in, in a conversation, right? The the shooter, uh, some a producer or something from the news, and then the guy that was wearing the Black Guns Matter shirt, right? Okay. So, you know, you're trying to let people come out here. Um, do you, do you, do you want to, are you now saying that you want to use the same tactics, 
or you just don't want people to be afraid. And if, you know, if they're out there obviously exercising their rights as well to come out and rally or even protest or whatever, and then someone decides, well, I'm going to, you know, come in here and go after you guys every time you do this, then you have to defend yourself. Or are you saying to be more proactive than that? No, I'm not, I'm not going to go after. I'm not going to be the aggressor. There's no reason to be the aggressor because they're going to come at you. Mm-hmm. You don't. Again, I've been standing up with, against them since July. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, down here in Colorado Springs, again, they've been mostly peaceful. Never even engaged with them, for, but for some reason, they're scared to death of me. Mm-hmm. Again, oh. the last time I showed up, they were they were out protesting at a cop's house, and they started attacking the neighbors because they wanted to get home. They're trying to drive through the through the protesters, and they start attacking the vehicles. You know, you allow people to go home, man. Mm-hmm. Don't be a douche. But they end up pulling a gun on him. He, he and I pulling a gun on them. You know, and so I got, I, I heard the word. I put the call out. We had about mm-hmm. 80, 80 armed, 80 armed guys and women mm-hmm. show up in the, well, yeah, within about forty five minutes. I wasn't there to protect the cops. You know, that, of course, that's what they claim I was doing. I was, I'm not going to protect the cops. Cops protect themselves. Um, and we were there standing next to the neighbor who they actually went to the house and tried to attack him. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, you. You want to get violent? I'll, I'll show up. You want to protest? I ain't gonna show up. Mm-hmm. Simple mm-hmm. as that. Up in Denver, you know, we were just there. I was just there with the, you know about twenty people, and just kind of seeing what's going on. You know, it's just just watching. They literally came a block out of their way to try to antagonize us and be the aggressors. We didn't we didn't approach them. They approached us. Mm-hmm. But every they say that we're the aggressors. We're the attackers. Mm-hmm. You know, we're the one the violence and destruction. You know, they're up, they're going to kill me, kill my dog. You know, they, they, one of the women that were there said, I'm going to rape you later. So it's mm-hmm. like, man, of course, okay. we, again, it's, you can say all you want to say. I'm just, I'm just laughing inside and I'm smiling. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is launch. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.